Right, a shalom, Makam. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Raka Kwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And we are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Simo Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. And according to the Holy Scriptures, we're God's chosen people. Shalom to all the beloved brethren out there, pushing this knowledge in sincerity and truth. Shalom to the few sisters and shalom to Israelite foreigners who are scattered abroad. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Okay? And what you're looking at is a true, or right here, and what you're looking at is a true depiction of who the world ignorantly called God, who the world ignorantly called Jehovah, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And when you call upon the most sign the son, you must say Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh means he to be or he is. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shai means he delivers. Our Lord and Savior is coming back to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel from the destruction of modern day Babylon, aka America. I'm going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and Barakat the Yahweh. Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh Shai and the water, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai for another blessed day. The water, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai for the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. The water, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai for this opportunity of this 100% truth. And the water, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai for all the beloved brethren out there pushing this knowledge in sincerity and truth. Dealing with the elect, starting off with 144,000. All right, coming back, catch you another lesson through the Holy Spirit. We're going to start off with Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 14. All right. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 14. It says, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about all he that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she had sinned against the Lord. So what is this talking about? This is talking about the, the nuclear uh, war that's going to take place. Uh, throughout the world between United between the, the world superpowers the world superpowers consist of America's number one then you have Russia and China okay these these three nations have the most nukes nuclear weapons upon the upon the, the face of the earth and United States of America and and um you know which is joined up with NATO have been at war for quite some time with different countries. Because, you know, they're, they are in their power. So this nation of America and NATO, that's all they know is war. But the Heavenly Father has been gearing up, gearing up these other nations with a high-tech weaponry through, the, through their thermonuclear uh, systems so, so they can shoot at this, this, um, shoot at this evil empire upon the last days of their rulership. That's that, um... The, uh, what you call it, the second death. Um, what the scripture calls it, the um, the, what you call it, the, the lake of fire, the lake of fire. It's not dealing with a place where you call with what they call hell, which is a mytho a mythology. The lake of fire is going to be here in America, but before that thermonuclear war takes place, the MOTB system will be set up. So let's get some a better understanding of this, this verse real quick. NLT says, yes, prepare to attack Babylon. So these other nations, the nuclear weapons, they're going to shoot the nuclear capabilities and nuclear weapons over here in America. America's going to shoot theirs off as well. But the place that's going to get destroyed is the modern day Babylon, America. All you surrounding nations, the nations that have these nukes. All right, let your archers shoot at her. So the ancient days of warfare, you had the archers with uh, the bow and the arrow. So today is advanced. Now, you're dealing with nuclear weapons that can be shot, you know, in the same type of direction from one continent to another continent between, between uh, 20 to 30 minutes of impact. That's some powerful stuff. Let your archers shoot at her, spare no arrows. So these arrows are deal with those nuclear bombs. Metaphorically speaking, foolish. She had sinned 
against the Lord. And that's what this place promotes. A do as thou will spirit. The most high commandments is not being kept in this land. And your president swore, swear in on the Bible. Or what retain, what looks like a Bible. So you're supposed to upheld the laws and commandments of, of the scriptures. But this place doesn't do that. That's why everything has been turned upside down. It's, it's, it's nothing but confusion out here. And that's what the word Babylon mean. It goes back to the Hebrew word Babal. Confusion. Now anybody that know anything about biblical history. Which is real histories in the Bible. There was once, a, a, there was once an, an ancient empire that was known as Babal. Under Nimrod. Alright. So this is the whole. Um, Babylonian construct coming back, the Roman Empire, the Assyrian Empire, everything into one. Modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, modern day Egypt, all these different places I mentioned got destroyed. So, this is the last of the heathens' rulership over the planet, and this is the last captivity the Israelites will be in. So, Heavenly Father is going to take this place out with a bang, something that you never seen before. So, if you're not part of the elect, all right, the one third, which is going to be right here in America, you're going to be caught up what the scripture called the lake of fire. All right, because this place from the top looking down is going to look like a lake of fire. So I'm going to give you some examples real quick. Nuclear bomb. Today we will learn about its power. We all know that in World War II, when what you are seeing all right, now is down. the world's largest. This is Russia's most powerful weapon, capable of destroying the entire United States. If this is fired, you will have less than 30 minutes to prepare. This is Russia's most powerful weapon, capable of destroying the entire United States. If this is fired, you will have less than 30 minutes to prepare. Less than 30 minutes to prepare. Let me explain. This is the Tsar nuclear bomb, the most potent weapon ever created by humanity. These bombs have a much more devastating impact than the ones used in Nagasaki. To put things into perspective, if Russia unleashed just one of these Tsar bombs on Japan, it would obliterate not only Japan, but also both North and South Korea. Shockingly, Russia only needs three of these giant bombs to make the United States uninhabitable, and just two to destroy the entirety of Europe. With Russia having an alarming 6,000 nuclear warheads on standby, they could practically destroy the entire world. But what? See that? You see that, man? Now these nations are strong. United States, you know, is, is the hem of the earth. Been at war, doing all types of things. These different nations. Destroying different nations. Destroying their, their, their rulers. Send up their different policies and all that stuff. But in one hour, through these uh, this high-tech weaponry, which the most high is given... These other nations, this place is going to, they can destroy the earth. You know, they can destroy the earth, man. So this is, this is not, this is not a game. This, this thing is, it will happen. The third world's war will consist of a nuclear war. What should you actually do if one is heading your way? In the event of a nuclear threat, the most important step is to seek immediate shelter. No, you can't, no, don't even listen to that. So how do you put Side of your name is written in the book of life, man. And all you different um Americans with uh well, you got a lot of money and stuff with your um your bomb shelters, you're gonna you're gonna be buried alive in there, you're gonna get melted in there. Alright? The elites have their bomb shelters outside of America. So the most side is gonna allow his men to go down there and rip you out of them fucking rocks, man. Ideally in a reinforced structure or underground. Stay there until so now United States have their nuclear warheads as well, which they're going to shoot off as well, you know. So it's going to be one hell of a sight to see. But this, this is all orchestrated by Yahweh by Shimia Washai. That's why I'm big on video illustrations to give you a good idea. You know, that's what the prophets, that's how they receive their visions. You know, the Most High, dealing with John the Revelator, the Most High actually opened up the sky. Like a theater, and he showed them the, the future events that's going to take place. And that's what we're doing to you, doing for, for the elect, to give you that actual visual, visualization of how, how fucking crazy, excuse my language, is going to be. Now, peep it. This is a Titan II missile and was the largest and most powerful intercontinental ballistic missile ever built by the U.S. 
It could launch from an underground concrete silo in under 60 seconds and was capable of delivering a nuclear warhead to targets more than 6,000 miles away in only about 35 minutes. The bomb would devastate an area of about 900 square miles and inflict first-degree burns at a distance of 30 miles. During the Cold War, there were 54 Titan II missiles located in three areas around the country, Arkansas, Kansas, and Arizona. Today, you can visit the Titan Missile Museum near Tucson and see this 103-foot missile, which once was used as a deterrent. You can also explore the control center and go through the exact... Now, they have upgraded. The United States have upgraded. Peep it. ...launch protocols that more than likely would have only been used... What you are seeing now is the world's largest nuclear bomb. Today, we will learn about its power. We on... I'm sorry, this ain't it. Excuse me. Here's the video, Salaka, this is United States weaponry. As the world watches wars being fought in both Europe and the Middle East, this morning a new push by the Department of Defense to upgrade its nuclear weapons. Military leaders recently announcing they will pursue production of the B-6113 nuclear gravity bomb, a weapon 24 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan during World War II. One defense leader writing in a statement that the need for the new nuclear weapon, quote, is reflective of a changing security environment and growing threats for potential adversaries. This is as serious a topic as we will hear about this year. Earlier this month on Capitol Hill, the Senate Armed Services Committee focused on the country's nuclear strategy. Leaders from both sides noted ongoing threats from enemies like Russia, which recently de-ratified a nuclear test ban treaty, as well as North Korea, which continues to conduct numerous weapons tests. To prevent war and keep the peace, it is incumbent on legislators to commit today to a program of sustained innovation and investment. This is the only way we can reclaim lost ground. This mission has become more urgent through Russia's assault on Ukraine and because of China's rapid strategic expansion. Here are the... Yep. U.S. Just two weeks ago, the National Nuclear Security Administration announced a team conducted an underground chemical explosion at a test site in Nevada, aimed at improving America's ability to detect nuclear explosions around the world. Now, with a call to upgrade the U.S.'s own weapons, some lawmakers want to see the country be prepared. It is yep, so these things are all according to biblical prophecy, and it will happen, man. The most side is going to allow these things to happen. All right. So going back to Jeremiah uh, 50 and 14, it says, put yourself in the ray against Babylon. Round about all he that bend the bow. So, you, so they mentioned China and North Korea and Russia. Shoot at her. So they're going to shoot these missiles over here. Spare no arrows. They're going to empty the whole clip. <laughs> for she had sinned against the Lord. And that's the end game for this place. All right. It says, shoot against her round about. She had given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her, her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Take vengeance upon her as she had done. Do unto her. Walls are, are, are thrown down. No defense system is going to stop these nuclear um, those nuclear missiles. It says, cut off the sore from Babylon and him that handled the sickle. In the time of harvest, for the fear of the oppressing sword shall turn everyone to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria had devoured him, and last is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had broken his bones. So, you know, it goes, the chapter goes back and forth. So Israel is a scattered sheep today. First, the Assyrian captivity happened to the northern kingdom, all right, which the, uh, today would be the Spanish-speaking tribes and the native tribes who came over here since around 724 B.C. And that left uh, mainly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi over there in the land. We got devoured by the Babylonians, the Persian, the Medes, all the way down. So everybody's over here today in the modern-day Babylon. And that's how this place is going to go out, man. Okay, in a thermal nuclear war. All right. 
So let's get uh, Isaiah 13. So this is very, very serious, man. This is very, very serious. Uh, Isaiah 13 and 6. Judgment on, on the day of the Lord. It says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from who? From the Almighty. The Most High is the one, Yahweh Shemiah Shai, is mustered, mustered the host of the battle. Therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. To my the case for nuclear war, take shelter. No, you're going to be melted, bro. You're going to get melted. You're going to be obliterated. All Everything you see out here, these cars, these buildings, everything is going to, it's going to go up in smoke, man. They shall be afraid. Pains and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travail it. As then the wind in childbirth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Like, oh no. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. To lay the land desolate, he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Right here. Right here, man. All right? For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to be to shine. Because once this, this nuclear war takes off, man, the, the whole sky is going to be covered in, in smoke. And, and, and man, it's going to be horrible, man. It's going to be horrible. All right. And it says, verse 11, I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So that's how the Lord is going to do all these things, man. That's the end game. That's the lake of fire. That's the second death. And the Lord is going to leave two thirds of you, the rest of you Americans out here, <laughs> to get melted, to get judged, all right, to die a horrific death painful death shallow womb